the travel agency decided to modify its ticket reservation process and include some new functionalities. First, it requested the possibility of allowing agency customers to enter their own reservations through the website. Customers must be logged onto the site and provide the reservation data – date, departure airport, arrival airport, number of passengers, and so on – to allow the system to create a reservation and start the flight ticket reservation process to later indicate the ticket reservation task as completed. When the passenger is already a customer of the agency, once the ticket reservation task is completed, the following task to execute is the first task in the Validate Reservation subprocess – Contact Airlines which in turn is a multi-instance task. The systems must also notify each person able to contact airlines that the instances of the contact airlines task are available to be executed. And lastly, substitute the task type notifying customers in regards to the reservation being authorized so that the notification is done in person. Let's start by the customer entering the reservation in the website. To that end, we will use a web panel called Travel Agency. This web panel includes variables on screen with which the user will enter the reservation data in addition to a confirm button. To simplify things for the purposes of this demo, we will assume that the customer entering is customer1, who's already logged in, so we will not include the login controls. If we go to the start event, we will see the code to simulate this. If we press the Confirm button, the Enter event will be executed and several tasks will be done. The new reservation method is invoked first to create a reservation in the database. Then, using workflow data types, the flight ticket reservation process is initiated and the ticket reservation task is marked as completed. These data types, starting by the prefix workflow, are Genexus data types which allow for the application to interact with the workflow engine. In order to use a workflow data type and interact with the engine's API, we must first define a variable with that data type. Then, with the help of the context information, we can choose the method or property we want to use. Workflow data types are classified into a hierarchy of classes. The highest class is the server class, on which three other classes depend, namely Process Definition, which allows us to access the components of a process diagram, Process Instance, which allows us to access an instance of a process under execution, and Organizational Model, which allows us to access the information regarding the company's organizational structure, such as roles and users. The server class is the entry point of the types hierarchy, and its methods enable us to access any workflow data type. The data types used most frequently are the following. With workflow process definition, we can access several properties of the diagram, such as name, version, tasks that include it, which we call activities, and we can also create an execution instance of the process with the create instance method based on that definition. Using workflow process instance, we can find the definition of the process on which the instance is based, the issue that the instance deals with, the collection of work items that are part of the instance, and through the get application by name method, we can retrieve relevant data by using its name. The Workflow Work Item class enables us to know the work that needs to be done by participants in the context of an activity within the process instance. Its process instance provides us with information on the process instance to which the work item belongs. And the activity property returns the activity that generated the work item. The assign method enables us to assign a work item to a specific user and the complete method enables us to end the execution of the work item. The workflow context data type provides us with information on the context of execution of an application associated with an activity. This context is automatically instanced when the application associated with the activity, that is the task, is a Genexus object 
that is part of the same KB that contains the process diagram. This automatic instancing of the context enables us to know the values of the process definition, the instance of the process, and the work item associated with the activity. Lastly, the workflow application data data type is the one we use when we want to work with relevant data, like when we store relevant data that we obtain through the get application data by name method. Now, back at the event of the web panel that invokes the flight ticket reservation process, we have here a defined variable, workflow server, of the workflow server type. In practice, we always use names of variables matching the workflow data types to make it easier to identify them. The first operation we perform with the workflow server data type is to connect to the workflow engine using the administrator password. We then obtain the definition of the flight ticket reservation process based on its name and save it in a variable of the workflow process definition type. Once we have the definition, we create an instance in the process with the create instance method. Then we change subjects so as to recognize the process easily in the input tray. Afterwards, we load relevant data, reservation ID, with the reservation identifier we created previously, and then start the instance with the start method. The following code lines are used to mark the ticket reservation task as completed. First, we obtain the ticket reservation activity from the definition of the process, and with that activity, we obtain the work item corresponding to the task under execution in the process. Then we mark the work item, that is, the task, as completed. We should note that, following the complete method, there is a commit. The changes made using the workflow data types are included within the application's logic work unit. However, workflow operations do not perform commit, so we must make sure that we define the UTL in the application correctly and do the commit in the end. In this case, we did the workflow operations on a web panel, so we will need to add the commit when we finish them. These workflow data types we saw are a subgroup of all the ones available, and we can do many tasks by code through the API of the workflow engine. Further information on this topic is available at the following link.